Let's say that you are on Amazon S3 console and you want to create a new bucket to store your data in. So you're going to click on create bucket. You're going to choose a name, a unique one, of course, and click next. Optionally, you can create versions for your files, but I'm going to skip that. I'm also going to skip the permissions for the objects and the buckets. Let's just accept the defaults and create the bucket. All right, now the bucket has been created and let's say that we want to start adding files to it. So clicking on the bucket, clicking on upload, add files, choose a file, double click, next. Optionally, of course, you can add permissions for other AWS users to access this object or granted public permissions, but I'm going to skip that and click next. And now you are asked to choose the storage class in which this file or this object is going to be saved. We have six different storage classes. However, the first five are the recommended storage classes by Amazon. The, the last one, which is reduced redundancy, is not recommended by Amazon. I'm gonna click Next. Load. Okay, now my file is available. But the file now is available on the standard class. Sometimes you may want to transition this file automatically to another storage class after a certain period of time. Let's say, for example, that this is a lock file, and lock files are of much high importance when they are just a few days ago, because you may want to review them for incidents or failures. However, as more days pass, they become less important and less frequently accessed, which makes them a perfect candidate for being stored or being transitioned to a cheaper storage class. Amazon gives you this functionality by creating what's called a life cycle rule. To enable lifecycle rule for a file, go to management and then add lifecycle rule. First, I'm going to enter a rule name. This is how your rule is going to be defined in the console. Let's say archive. Optionally, you can also choose the prefix of the files that you want to include in this transition rule. So instead of applying the lifecycle rule on all the files in the bucket, like for example, log underscore then a timestamp. So let's say for example that you are uploading log files and all your log files start with the word log underscore then a timestamp like say the year, the, the month and the day. So you want to include only files or objects that start with the word log underscore and then take whatever objects that fall into this category. Okay, I'm gonna click next to apply the lifecycle rule on all the files or all the objects in my bucket. And here you must select the current version and optionally any previous versions of your files because S3 Buckets allows you to keep several versions of your objects in the bucket so that if one file got accidentally deleted, you can restore the previous versions. In my case, I have not enabled versioning, so I'm gonna just click on current version and I'm gonna click add transition. Now. By adding a transition, I'm going to choose the storage class that I want the files in my bucket to be transferred to after a certain period of time calculated in days. So let's say I want to transition to standard IA after 30 days. So in our specific example, if we are uploading log files, log files become of less importance and they are accessed less frequently after 30 days of being stored. So I want to store them automatically on a cheaper storage class, which is standard IA. Later on, I may add another transition, so those files will be further transitioned to another storage class, perhaps cheaper. I'm going to choose Amazon Glacier after 90 days. So after three months, the logs become even less important and they become even less accessed than before. I do not need the log files that are older than three months to be readily available, but if I have a situation that I need a very old log file. It's okay for me to wait for a few minutes or a few hours, depending on the importance of the log file, to be retrieved. Of course, this will cost me much less. Okay, I'm gonna click next. And optionally, I can also configure an expiration rule where those files are going to be permanently deleted from the bucket after a certain period of time. So I'm going to click current version and I'm going to select 445 days from object creation 
the objects may be deleted. So I'm going to delete all my log files after about one year and a few months where they become of no importance at all. So I'm going to delete them to save space and of course reduce my costs. Click next and now lifecycle rule has been created in my bucket. I can click on this lifecycle rule and I can disable it or edit it so I can change any of the settings that I have just configured. Okay, click save. And I can also, of course, delete it altogether.